Impact evaluation matters in any area because it allows us to find out uh, if we are having positive effects and positive impacts as opposed to negative impacts and also to make sure that we're not having any unintended consequences uh, either positive or negative. Now that's important because I guess first of all we are often spending uh, other people's money both private and public money in the pursuit of, uh, of uh, initiatives which we believe will uh, improve the climate, will improve uh, um, forestry, air quality and what have you. Uh, and we really need to know whether we are having those effects and we're not having negative side effects or unintended consequences. Uh, it's also important so that we know when to adapt, that our policies often need tweaking or we need to change direction. Uh, so that we don't keep on doing things that don't work and we start doing things that do work and that are effective. We should understand that when we do impact evaluations we're always working within the scope of probability <clears throat> and our aim is to make sure that we are as confident as possible that our impacts are positive and, and having societal benefits. Uh, we can never be absolutely definite because evidence is never definite. It's more than belief though because um, we establish the strongest designs we can so that for every intervention we have we also have a comparator or a control group. And that allows us to see whether the initiatives in our test area are different, significantly different from those in our control area. So that's how we build up the knowledge that something is working. It's not just working in and of itself, it's in comparison with doing something else, uh, usually in a very closely defined and nearby area. We're learning a lot about how to get evidence into policy. One of the ways to do that is to try and get policy involvement from the beginning is to be asking questions that are not just scientifically interesting, and we need those, but also that are scientifically interesting and have a connection to policy makers and to practitioners. What are the problems they're dealing with, either with policy development uh, or with uh, um, running a, an NGO or actually rolling out an initiative? So I think some collaboration between the policy practice community and the research community at the beginning helps then <clears throat> we need to be independent of them. It's very important we have to do this to independent standards that we're not interfered with by donors, by policymakers or practitioners. They may be on our advisory boards and what have you, but the independence is absolutely crucial. At the end of the day, we've got to take very technical evidence and convert it or translate it into uh, messages and languages and presentational formats that are useful to policymakers and practitioners. They will not want table after table after table or graph after graph of data. We come and examine that at events like this. We need to have some take-home messages. We need to have some one-page summaries for our ministers and senior policymakers. Good, well-written three-page executive summaries for administrators of implementers. And usually a version of our final reports that are readable in non-technical language of about 20 to 25 pages. And that means that we have different products for different audiences. But you have to work evidence. You have to take it and get into dialogue with people. The, the word is to engage. It's not dissemination, it's engagement. If you don't engage with the policy and practice community, you're not going to get evidence into policy or practice. That engagement is very important.